Judges chapter 8. And let's pray. Father, again, we thank you for this time tonight. Thank you for your word. Thank you that we can come here and worship you. I love how it is in a school, that through the halls of this school, that we your name goes forth. And I love that. And I love your word tells us that it does not return void. So when your name goes out through these halls, it has a purpose. And for your word, too, it goes out and it goes through these halls and people hear it. It does not return void. So may we hear it tonight as well. May we uh, receive what you have for us tonight. Help us to open our ears and our hearts and our minds to what you have for us. We thank you for your word. We thank you for this time. And it's in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Judges chapter 8, verse 13. And it says, Then Gideon, the son of Joash, returned from the battle by the ascent of, of Heres, and he captured a young man of Sakoth and questioned him, and he wrote down for him the officials and elders of Sakoth, seventy-seven men. And he came to the men of Sakoth and said, Behold, Ziba and Zalmunna, about whom you taunted me, saying, Are the hands of Ziba and Zalmunna already in your hand, that we should give bread to your men who are exhausted? Verse 16, and he took the elders of the city, he took the thorns of the wilderness and briars, and with them taught the men of Sakoth a lesson. And he broke down the tower of Penuel and killed the men of the city. Lessons. We've all been taught lessons. Some have come through our schooling or academia. Some, uh, through teachers in different subjects and courses, we've been taught life lessons as well. Those you don't learn in school, but what you learn from just living life, facing each new day. Like making sure you put the mayo back in the fridge after you open it, instead of back in the cupboard. That's a good lesson to learn. <laughs> or that one, a happy life is a happy wife. All right, they don't teach that in school, but that's a life lesson. Even our parents have taught us lessons. You may have some fond memories of your mom or dad teaching you. And my favorite one that we all kind of know uh, is the one, don't eat the cookie dough. <laughs> don't eat the raw cookie dough because it has eggs in it and it will make you sick. Right? That's a lesson. That's one our mom taught us, my mom taught us. And some lessons are more critical, more important than others, like how to swim. Most of us may have been through swim lessons when we were younger, and the whole point of those swim, le swim lessons was so that if we ever were found in a body of water, right? That's what your parents used to say. If you're ever in water, you'll know how to swim, right? But those lessons were critical. If we're ever found in a body of water with no life vest, We'd be able to stay afloat. We'd be able to tread water or even make it to shore so we wouldn't drown. Swim lessons were taught to help us swim and not sink. Those swim lessons were a matter of life and death. Critical for us so we'd be able to survive, so we would be able to live. But there's another lesson we are to learn tonight. And I would say it's the most important lesson we could ever learn. The most important lesson we could ever learn. It's critical because it is a matter of life and death, and we are going to learn this lesson in our scriptures tonight. When Gideon, with Gideon returning from war and teaching the people of these two cities, of Sakoth and Penuel, a lesson. And you and I need to pay close attention because this is not just a lesson for those people in the Bible. This lesson is for us all because it's an eternal lesson, one we all need to understand and one we all need to learn because it's a matter of life and death. It's a matter of life and death. So let's dive in. That was a pun, by the way. Nobody's laughing. Okay, fine. All right, verse 13. Read it with me one more time. It says, Then Gideon, the son of Joash, returned from the battle by the ascent of Heres, and he captured a young man of Sakoth and questioned him. 
And he wrote down for him the officials and elders of Sukkoth, 77 men. And he came to the men of Sukkoth and said, Behold, Ziba and Zalmunna, about whom you taunted me, saying, Are the hands of Ziba and Zalmunna already in your hand that we should give bread to your men who are exhausted? And he took the elders of the city, and he took the thorns of the wilderness and briars, and with them taught the men of Sukkoth a lesson. And he broke down the tower of Penuel and killed the men in the city. Gideon, as we looked at last time, he, uh, he was pursuing the remnant of the Midianite army, those 15,000 men who were left over out of the 135,000 men, along with the two kings, Ziba and Zalmunna. So as Gideon and his 300 men were pursuing, they became exhausted. They were wearing out, getting fatigued. And Gideon and his men came to these two cities asking for help. And if you remember, they got turned away. They were asking for food, for bread, to feed the men, the army. But instead of receiving help, receiving the food, Gideon and his men were turned away. Turned away from each city, they refused to help Gideon. And so he promised them that upon his return, Gideon promised them upon his return that in victory he would repay Sakoth and Penuel for their refusal to help him, for their resistance, for their disobedience, if you will, you could even say their sin. Gideon was going to repay them for what they had done, how they had treated him and his men. And he does. He took the elders of the city and he took the thorns of the wilderness and briars and publicly beat them. Whipping them for refusing to support his cause, even taunting Gideon for thinking he could conquer the Midianites and their kings. You could say Gideon scourged these men for their disobedience to his request. And he also tore down the tower at Penuel and killed all the men in the city. But the Bible says that Gideon was teaching them a lesson. Now for us, Scripture instructs us in Romans chapter 12, verse 17, to repay no one for evil. As we step out and serve the Lord, being obedient to him and what he has called us to do, we may face similar opposition. But we are not to repay those who oppose us in this way. We are not to avenge ourselves, but leave it to God. He will take care of it, right? The Bible says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I will repay it. So even though Gideon was repaying these cities for their refusal to, refusal to help, he's also teaching them. He's teaching them a lesson, a very important lesson, one that the cities will learn from. A lesson we can also learn from or draw from. It's a foreshadowing, if you will, of future events. But what is he teaching us? What is this lesson? What are we to learn? And that's the consequence or the result for not fearing the Lord, for not trusting in God. We are learning what happens to those who do not place their faith in the Lord. For all who do not trust in Jesus Christ will have to face or endure the judgment of God and bear his wrath. And this is a hard lesson. This is a tough lesson for some, but one we need to understand, one we need to fully grasp, one we need to learn. Because just like those swim lessons, it's a matter of life and death. It is critical that we get this because it's eternally significant. That carries over even after we take our last breath on earth. How we respond from what we learn tonight from this lesson will impact us eternally. That's why this lesson is so important. The most important and why we need to learn from it. And yes, this lesson can be uncomfortable for some. It's not easy to hear, difficult, sure, but it's the truth. And I'm not going to forego truth so you can remain comfortable. It's quite the opposite. I will always forego your comfort for the truth. I will always forego your comfort for the truth because you and I, all of us, need to hear the truth, no matter how it makes us feel. And you and I need to understand the significance of this truth, understand what we are being taught so we can make a wise decision, so we can make the right decision. 
because it won't just affect us here and now, but it will affect us even into eternity. So if that makes us a little uncomfortable, if that makes you a little uncomfortable, good. Good. Because it will help motivate us. It will help motivate you. So this is a lesson being taught, taught here. The people of Sakath and Penuel did not want to help Gideon and his men. Why? Because they feared the Midianites. And not the Lord. They feared the Midianites and not the Lord. They did not trust in God, but a tower. They did not believe Gideon would be successful. And in doing so, they did not believe the Lord in the Lord and trust in the Lord. And they were disciplined for it. Gideon taught them a lesson. And the people in these two places wanted proof first instead of trusting now. They wanted proof before they would believe. But isn't that how some people are? Isn't that how some people are about Jesus? They want proof before they will trust, before they will believe. Something tangible before they take that step of faith. In verse 6 that we read last week, the officials of Sukkoth responded to Gideon's request in this same manner. He's, they said, are the hands of Ziba and Zalmunna already in your hand that we should give bread to your army? They mocked Gideon. They mocked him and they wanted proof before they would give of themselves, before they would believe. As the Lord's body was hanging on the cross, people would walk by, shaking their heads, mocking him. And the chief priests and the scribes came and did the same. They were mocking Jesus, saying, He saved others, cannot, can he not save himself? If he's the king of Israel, let him come down now from that cross, and we will believe in him. And we find that in Matthew chapter 27. But they were mocking him, and these people still do that today. And people still want proof of Jesus, that he is real today. That he was who he said he was. God the Son, but also the Son of Man, taking on flesh, came to live with us on earth, healed the sick, made the lame walk, restored sight to the blind, cast out demons, and raised the dead back to life. But for some, still not enough. It's still not enough. And even the cross was not enough. For many, even today, it is still not enough. And we have his word, right? We have testimony, eyewitnesses for all those things about Jesus, for what he did, who he was. And as some of you know, you also have that testimony. You have that testimony. Jesus has transformed your life. You were one way, but now you are different. Born again, washed clean by the blood of the Lamb, and we, we have all this evidence, all this proof. But for some, sadly, it's not enough. And they will put off, they will put it off, put off their faith, or remain in disbelief, and even mock Jesus for it. And they still mock him today. Easter is coming in a couple of weeks. And for some of those of the world, what I heard this week from the world was people referring to this time as zombie Jesus. When the Lord came back to life, and they, they call him a zombie. People are still mocking him today. Even today, still in disbelief. Still not trusting in the Son of God. Others, they will trust in a strong tower. They will trust in that strong tower made by their own hands, like the people of Penuel. Instead of having God as their strong tower, their refuge, their strength, their hope, trusting, they'll be trusting in themselves, trusting in wealth or chemicals or man, whatever it may be, and believing it is a sure and strong foundation, but not realizing that even those earthly towers will not be able to stand against the power and judgment of God. Gideon and his men tore that tower down. The people of Sakath and Penuel didn't believe, they wouldn't believe, but as we read, Gideon was speaking the truth. He did conquer. He was victorious. 
And now he has returned to repay the people for what they had done. He returned to repay the people for their choices, their deeds. And guess what? So will the Lord Jesus Christ. He's coming back. Flip over to Revelation chapter 22. All the way to the right. And when I say all the way to the right, it pretty much is all the way to the right. Revelation chapter 22, look at verse 12. Jesus says, Behold, I am coming soon, bringing my recompense with me to repay everyone for what he has done. I am coming soon to repay everyone for what he has done. Christ is coming back, and he's coming soon to reward or to repay everyone for what they have done, for our works, our deeds, and the heart behind those deeds. But what does that look like? Where do we see that? Flip over to the left a little bit to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25, look at verse 31. We're going to read of verse 46, just for context, but Matthew chapter 25, verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate the people from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on his left. And the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you a drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. Verse 41. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, you cursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick, and in prison, you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to you? Verse 45. Then he will answer them, saying, Truly I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And, they, and these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. For the believers, they will be rewarded for placing their trust in the Lord and having a life that proves it. Having a life that shows it. They will be rewarded with what? Eternal life. But for those who have not placed their faith in the Lord, who do not believe, trusting in everything else but God, those who have not committed their life to Christ Jesus, their lives will reflect it. And they will be punished for it. Just like what we saw from the people of these two cities and how they treated Gideon and his men. They turned him and those 300 guys away. They refused to help and then when Gideon returned, he repaid him for it. Gideon repaid them for it. And those people in those cities were punished. But this is the lesson being taught here. This is the lesson being taught. 
in Judges chapter 8. This is what we are to learn and comprehend because it will decide our eternal state. Everlasting life or eternal punishment. We have a choice to make and we need to make it now because by the time we figure this out, it may be too late. For those two cities, those elders, those men, it was too late. They had their chance and now that chance was gone. And for those who are just waiting for all this Christianity stuff to come true, for Jesus to be real or even waiting until they pass on and see for themselves and then knowing and realizing and finally understanding it was all true, it's going to be too late. And they will be judged. I met a guy like this once. Nice guy, funny guy. But when we would talk about eternity, he would, his response was always the same. I'll just wait until I get there. I'll just wait until I take my last breath. And I was like, I always tell him, don't wait that long. It's going to be too late. It's going to be too late by then. Just like what we find here with the people upon Gideon's return, these elders of Sakath and Penuel had their chance to trust in the Lord and what he was doing. His plans, raising up a judge, this man to save Israel. But when Gideon came back in victory, their opportunity to trust in the Lord vanished. It was gone. There was no second chance. And now they were to be repaid for their choice. And they were whipped with thorns and briars. Their flesh was ripped open. Their bodies were bruised. They were scourged. And they were punished and even put to death. And this is also part of our lesson tonight. And what we have learned, and what we have to learn, is that for anyone who is against God, anyone whose faith is not placed in the Lord and Jesus, whom he has raised up, God has raised Jesus up, his plans, his salvation. If we do not place our faith in Christ, it'll be us, it'll be you to endure this punishment. You will be the one to be acquainted with this grief. You will have to endure this. Unless... Unless your faith is in the Lord Jesus. And so we need to understand another lesson. That God sent his only begotten son into this world. Jesus Christ to save us from this punishment. To save us from this grief we deserve. How? By becoming acquainted with, his, with our own grief. Jesus became acquainted with our own sin bearing this lesson on his body. Flip over to Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. Look at verse 3. This is speaking of the Messiah. This is speaking of Jesus. It says, He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. He was acquainted with grief. He was despised and rejected. That word acquainted here in Isaiah 53 is the Hebrew word Yada. I've been practicing my Hebrew. Just started. Um, but it's Yada. But do you know where else we find this word, Yada? It's in Judges chapter 8, verse 16, where Gideon taught these men a lesson. This is the lesson. It is the word lesson. The people of Sakath and Penuel bore this lesson on their own bodies. They became acquainted with grief because of their sin and disobedience to the Lord. That was their lesson. But we learn that Jesus came to this world to take our place so that he could become acquainted with 
our grief, to pay the price for our sin, for your sin, for my sin, on his body, to bear that lesson on himself, which is what we get to remember and what we get to celebrate in a few weeks with Easter. It's a great lesson. Because it was Jesus who was whipped. It was Jesus who was beaten and bruised. His flesh was torn apart. He was the one who was scourged. And it was Jesus who endured the cross, endured the suffering and even death. And then rise again that third day. That is your lesson. That is your grief you deserve bore on his body. He took your place. He became acquainted with your grief so you would not have to. But that transfer of grief can only take place when we put our faith in Jesus. When we confess our sins, ask for forgiveness, and commit our lives to him. Following him the rest of our days here on earth. But is that you tonight? Is that you tonight? Is that someone here or is that someone listening in? And maybe we've walked away from the Lord, turned away from him, but need to come back. The time is now. It's time to come back. It's time to recommit your life to him now. Don't put it off. Don't wait for another day. Today is the day of salvation. The Lord is coming back. And he's coming soon to reward those who trust in him and to repay those who don't. Where do you fall? Where do you fall? Which camp do you want to be in? What is your choice after learning this lesson? Will you sink or will you swim? For those of us here tonight or listening in who want to be rewarded, who are ready to place their trust in Jesus, ready to come back, then it's time to pray. It's time to pray. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, I admit to you that I'm a sinner and I want to turn, my, turn from my sin, my disobedience, and stop living for myself and live for you. I give you my life, Lord. Thank you for bearing my lesson. Thank you for bearing my grief on your body, taking my place so I could be forgiven and receive everlasting life. Amen. And we know scripture tells us that anyone who prays that prayer, places their life in Christ, is forgiven, is set free and born again, and will be rewarded with everlasting life. Your grief, that lesson, was placed on Jesus. And if that was one of you tonight, please come and see me after service. Please come and see me or send me a message if you're watching. But I want to rejoice with you. I want to pray with you. And if you're here tonight and need prayer, you're in a tough season and just need someone to pray with you, come. I'll pray with you. Let's pray together and seek the Lord together. And if the Lord has done something, is doing something amazing in your life, then come. I want to hear about it. I want to rejoice with you too. But come. Come. Let's pray. Father God, again, we thank you for this time tonight. We thank you for the truth. We thank you for the truth. Even though it is hard to hear, may we be motivated to stay true. May we be motivated to stay true. Guide us, Lord, into everlasting life. I thank you for your word. It, is, it can be hard, it can be heavy, but you gave it to us for a reason so that we would know the truth. So I pray for us tonight, Lord. 
I pray for us that you would keep us in the truth and help us to share the truth as more people need to hear it. Gosh, so many more need to hear it. So put us in those places, those areas of our lives where we can share truth. And even though it is a little uncomfortable, even though it might be a little hard or difficult, it'll be worth it. Because someone else will come to know the truth and believe in the truth of you, Jesus. So thank you again for tonight. May you guide us as we leave this place and guide us this week through all the ups and downs, all those lessons that we are to learn. Be with us. That's in your great name, Jesus, we pray. Amen.